In the last video, we showed how we derive the slope deflection equations. These equations show us how we can calculate the member N moment, so MAB, so the moment at A pointing towards B, or MBA, the moment at B pointing towards A, if we know the rotations of the ends of the beam and the relative deflection between the ends of the beam and something called fixed end moments, which we'll come on to as we go through this example. So in the example, we have a continuous beam that has completely on castrate ray support at A and C, at the left-hand end and the right-hand end. And we have a pin support at B. So that's five meters away from A and four meters away from C. On the span AB, we have a uniformly distributed load of eight kilonewtons per meter. If we look at the beam, we can see we have an unknown vertical reaction at A, potentially a horizontal reaction we're not so interested in. We have a moment reaction also at A. We have a vertical reaction at B. Again, could have a horizontal, but we're not so interested. And at C, we have a vertical reaction, a moment reaction, and a potential horizontal reaction. So we have one, two, three, four, five unknown forces, and only two equations, so three equations of equilibrium. So this is indeterminate system. If we were to use a force-based approach, we would have to solve, find a method for finding two unknown forces in the system. Now we're using a displacement-based approach, the slope deflection equation. What we're looking for is to find, first of all, the unknown displacements and rotations at the member ends, and then follow that up to calculate the unknown moments. So if we have a look at the system we've got here, now we're gonna have a look at the displacements and rotations that we know. So at A, we know that theta A, the rotation must be equal to zero. And we also know, let's call it, uh, so we're using big delta for the relative deflection between two ends. So we'll just use a little delta. A must also be equal to zero. At B, we know that delta B is equal to zero, but phi to B is unknown. And now we go along to C, and again, we know that phi to C must be equal to zero, and the deflection delta C is equal to zero. So in this whole system, we only have one unknown deflection or rotation. So it's one unknown. And instead of using deflection or rotation all the time, we're gonna call deflections and rotations grouped together degrees of freedom. And because we're structural engineers, we also get bored of writing degrees of freedom down longhand. So we'll call this a DOV, degree of freedom. And there is only one unknown, that is feet to be in the system. And we'll now show the procedure using the slope of flex deflection equations to calculate this unknown feet to be. And finally, get our member N moments at A, B and C and then draw the resulting bending moment diagram, included, <coughs> including the contribution from the uniformly distributed load AB. So the first thing we need to do is looking at our slope deflection equations is calculate any of these unknowns in this equation. So if we know theta a is naught, we can know that disappears. And the big one that's missing is this fixed end moment. So if you were to do a search in an internet search engine, you'd quickly find 
results and you can find tables of these much bigger this is directly from wikipedia you can get fixed end moments and for a udl the fixed end moment is ql squared upon 12. so let's draw that so we have the fixed end moments And so for the span AB, we have a UDL. So we have fixed at both ends. We have a UDL, we'll call this W. And to get back from the simply supported deflected shape to the deflected shape with no rotation at the end, we have to apply this fixed end moment. And that is WL squared upon 12. And in this, the far end, we have WL squared upon 12. So we can write then the fixed end moment at A pointing towards B is equal to WL squared upon 12, which is eight kilonewtons per meter times five meters squared divided by 12 equals 16.67 kilonewton meters. Now, if we look at our diagram for our fixed end moments, this is going in an anti-clockwise direction but we've said for our equations, our slope deflection equations we derived, we're taking moments to be clockwise positive. So let's just remind ourselves. So slope deflection equations, moments are clockwise positive on the beam span so as we can see this would need to be going in an anti-clockwise direction so in the sign convention we're using for this method that would be a negative fixed end moment now we do the same for the fixed end moment at b pointing towards a fixed end moment at b pointing towards A. Again, in magnitude is WL squared upon 12. So that's identical, 16.67 kilonewton meters as at the other end. But in this case, it's going in a clockwise direction already. So we can take this to be positive. We could also have fixed end fixed end moments for BC and fixed end moment for CB. So B at B pointing towards C or at C pointing towards B. But there is the, as there is no applied load on the span BC, there is no need for this correction factor. So these are both equal to zero. With the fixed end moments calculated, we can now use our slope deflection equations to write down our moments in terms of the unknown displacements and the fixed end moments. So let's write those down. So we have member end moments. So M A B is equal to four E I divided by L multiplied by theta A plus two E I upon L multiplied by theta B minus six E I 
divided by L squared multiplied by delta. And finally, plus fixed end moment AB. And we're going to also write down that MBA is now equal to 2EI upon L times by theta A plus 4EI upon L multiplied by theta B minus, minus 6EI upon L squared multiplied by delta plus the fixed end moment B A. So if we remind ourselves of the span AB is fixed in the vertical direction at A and B and fixed in rotation at A, then we can say that theta A must be equal to zero. So this term goes out and this term goes out. Delta, the relative displacement between A and B is equal to zero. So these terms disappear. And then finally, we can tidy up our member n moments. So we get that m a b is equal. And now I'm going to substitute for the lengths is two fifths of e i theta b plus the fixed end moment, which is minus 16.67 kilonewton meters. Do the same for MBA. And so we have now four fifths EI multiplied by phi to B plus 16.67 kilonewton meters the fixed end moment and we're going to do the same for the second span bc and we can write that m b c is equal to 4 upon 4 e i theta b and m c b is equal to 2EI upon 4 theta B. And there's no fixed end moment added to these because it doesn't exist on the span BC. So now we have all of these equations, but we have one unknown theta B that we need to get rid of. And the way that we can do that is if we look at the moment equilibrium of joint B. So we need a way that we can remove this unknown theta b. So what we could do is we have two equations here that both involve the moment at joint b. So we could examine the moment equilibrium of joint b to set up an equation that only involves theta b. So moment equilibrium of joint B. Okay, so we're going to draw a free body diagram of joint B on its own. So, this is joint B or node B as some might call it. And I think it's also instructive if we imagine the span B and gets all the way to C and the span B A. The, mem the moments on the end of these beams was considered to be clockwise positive. Okay, so we draw that on. So this was M B A, M B C. And this clockwise positive was M B A. So for equilibrium, we need to apply 
the equal but opposite moment onto the joint or the node at B. Right. So clockwise positive, so that's going in this direction clockwise. Therefore, on B itself, we're going to apply the equal but opposite. And so the equal but opposite will be in this manner. So this is now MBA and this is MBC. So let's delete these parts because they're getting in the way. So, and I think this is an important point to note. At the nodes, moments are anti-clockwise positive. Okay, so now we've set up this free body diagram, we can write our equation of equilibrium. So sum of the moments at B, and we get that M, B, A plus M, B, C must be equal to zero. And now we can substitute the equations for M, B, A and M, B, C into this formula. So I'm tidying up slightly. We have 0.8 E, I, theta, B plus the fixed end moment from this part, which was 16.67, plus EI theta B is equal to zero. And therefore rearranging this, we can solve for theta B, which is so 16.67, Seven minus, we're taking it over to the other side, divided by 1.8 EI. And I can tidy that up slightly to be minus 9.26 divided by EI. We'll substitute EIs later if need be. So at this point in our problem, we have solved for the one unknown, oops, theta b in our problem. So here we have theta b nine point two minus nine point two six divided by e i. So with that known, we can go all the way back to our slope deflection equations that we'd written down earlier. We can now substitute for theta b in these expressions and find out our unknown moments at the ends of the members. So, oops. I'm gonna substitute back into the member end moments that we derived earlier. So without me repeating, writing those down, always rewind the video, we have M A B is equal to 0 0.4 E I substitute for phi to B, which is minus 9.26 divided by EI minus 16.67, the fixed end moment, and throw this into the calculator, and we can get, so first of all, EI and EI cancels out, and we get that the moment is minus 20.37 kilonewton 
meters. Doing the same for MBA, we get 0.8 EI. Again, substitute for phi to B, which is minus 9.26 divided by EI plus 16.67 for this so deflection equation for the member and moment which equals 9.26 kilonewton meters and the same for mbc which was ei theta b which is minus 9.26 Two six over e i, so that equals minus nine point two six kilonewton meters, and finally we get m c b is equal to zero point five e i multiplied by phi to b minus 9.26 divided by EI which equals minus 4.63 kilonewton meters so at this point we now have all four of the member end moments and what I'm going to do just quickly to remind ourselves so we have span AB and the span BC, we have minus 20.37. So minus means that it's going in an anti-clockwise direction. At B, we had 926 and it's positive, so it's going in a clockwise direction, so 9.26. Uh, we can see from BC, we have minus 9.26, so going in an anti-clockwise direction. And a nice sanity check is that they're equal and opposite at, from BA and BC because it's in equilibrium and then finally we have minus 4.63 at for cb so minus means that it's going anti-clockwise and that's 4.63 in magnitude so the final thing that i need to do is understand what the influence of the udl would be on my bending moment diagram so at the moment let's just draw for ourselves what we have and let's draw here's where b is here's where a is and here's where c would be so a b C. And we're going to be using our tension positive way of drawing our bending moment diagram. So one of the quick things we can do is we can see we have a moment going in this anti-clockwise direction at this left hand side A. So that would, would mean that we would have to have a deflected shape like so for that to be. So the tension would be on the top side. And therefore, our moment of, let's call it 20.4, would be on top of the axes. Again, at B, we can see that we have this rotation going in a clockwise manner. So we would require a deflected shape like this. And... Therefore, our tension would again be on the top side at this point. So the 9.26, so roughly half, would exist on the top, on the tension side. 
Oh, let's go. Tension positive. Now, on this right hand side at C, we can see that we have a rotation that is going anti clockwise, which would generate a curvature like this. The tension would be on the bottom. So the 4.63 would be the tension side would be on the bottom of the beam so that's 4.6 at this point now between b and c we know there's no other loading on there so we can simply draw a straight line between those points and if you like we can shade it in between a and b however we're unsure what's happening. But what we do know is we have a UDL between those points. So what we can do is use superposition to take away from the member end moment or the, the moment generated by those member end moments. So if we go to the center, if we take away the simply supported contribution which would be w r squared upon eight then we can draw our bending moment diagram using the principle of superposition so and this is only approximate but it's normally good enough for engineering calculations so our average value at this point here so 20.4 plus 9.3 divided by 2 would give us an average value of 14.8 and our simply supported moment is equal to WL squared upon 8 which equals 8 times 5 squared upon 8 which equals 25 kilonewton meters so 14.8 minus 25 kilonewton meters gets us to approximately 10.2 kilonewton meters here at this bottom point and at this point we have enough information for designer to go away and use this bending moment diagram for design purposes so just to finish off put our units kilonewton meters on the axes and also we have our sign convention telling us that we're going with tension positive on the top side okay